Hey everybody, Mike Aginelli back out here in the shop and I've got a good one for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about post frontal fishing. How to catch post frontal bass. Um, and it's challenging. It's one of the most challenging things we deal with. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about location where those bass go after the front passes. And I'm going to talk to you about two of my favorite ways to catch them after that front passes. So post frontal. Before we do that though, let me talk a little bit about what is post frontal? What does that mean? What's the term mean? Um, and in a nutshell, basically it's on the back side of a front or a storm system, right? So if you can imagine um, when a storm is coming through or a system is coming through, um, it gets cloudy, it gets windy. A lot of times during the storm, there's rain and wind as well. And when that storm's hitting, before and during the storm, the baromic pressure drops. The pressure drops, and that's when the fishing is phenomenal. A lot of times, prefrontal, when the front's hitting and that barometer is dropping, you can throw anything, throw anything in your tackle box, and they'll bite. Fishing's really good. But after the storm passes, the next day, the next, the second day after the front passes, it it's different. It looks different. The skies are blue, bluebird skies. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's often a little colder. Uh, the air and the water temperature get a little colder. Sometimes it's windy. But one thing that's always true post frontal is now that baromic pressure, that same pressure that we talked about, is rising. You have a rising pressure. That is the kiss of death. Um, so many years I've fished, and I've seen it time after time. When the pressure's rising, the fishing gets tough. So what do you do to catch bass during post-frontal conditions? There's two things we're gonna do, and there's two ways to catch these fish. <coughs> the first one is Staying shallow, staying in those areas where you were catching them pre-front and going thicker into the cover. Getting deeper and thicker into that cover. That's one way to catch post-frontal bass. The second way to catch post-frontal bass is to go deeper, to back out to deeper water in that same area that you had been catching fish before the front, okay? So the two ways to catch post-frontal bass are thicker, staying shallow, staying in the area you were catching them, and getting your bait in the thickest cover available. Or two, backing out and going to deeper water near the area where you had been catching them before. Um, if you look at my, got a little whiteboard here, uh, if you look at this drawing, pretty, pretty great artwork, I know. Um, we've got the surface of the lake, we're looking at it from the side, we've got our bottom, our bottom contour, which tapers off pretty slow, has a little bit of a drop, and then it drops off to the main lake basin, or the main river basin, or whatever you're fishing. Um, and I drew in some thick cover in that shallower water. I've got some emergent vegetation like reeds, uh, cattails. I've got some matted vegetation that could be lily pads, the hyacinths, could be matted hydrilla. And then I drew in a big stump or a log or a piece of standing timber. You know, that thick cover could also be a dock. It could be a marina with a ton of docks around it. Um, 
It could be giant boulders if you're on a lake with a lot of rocks. So basically, that super thick cover and that shallower water and that water you were already fishing before the front, that's where some of those fish are going to go. And here's the interesting thing, and I'm, I'm going to sketch it for you. Before the front, right, when that pressure was falling, these fish were outside. There's my drawing of a fish. These fish were outside of the cover. They were near it. You don't even have to get near it with your cast, and they'd come up and eat your bait. But now, that barometer rises. The front's passed. It's bluebird sky. These fish are going to get as tight to that cover as you can imagine. They're going to get in the reeds. They're going to get under the mat around these logs and standing timber and docks, they're, they're going to be inside of it. They're going to be right next to it, touching it with their body. And for those post-frontal bass that stay shallow and get thick, there's one bait I want to show you that's really become my superstar bait for this fishing. You know, it used to be punching a jig or punching a heavyweight Texas rig. But in the last couple years, my go-to for these thick, shallow, post-frontal fish is a Tokyo rig. Uh, this is a Tokyo rig by BMC. Um, got a lot of different hook options. This is one with a 4 aught VMC heavy-duty flipping hook. And the nice thing about the Tokyo rig is I can pick the weight that's heavy enough to get into that thick cover. Um, a lot of times I use a little heavier weight post frontal so I could get it down in that thick stuff. Um, anywhere from a three eighths all the way up to an ounce and a half. But a half ounce, a three quarter, a one ounce weight, I use those a lot. This happens to be a VMC half ounce tungsten. And I want to show you how easy it is to make this Tokyo rig. I'm basically going to, uh, if you look at the Tokyo rig, it's got a wire and it's got an open end on it. And I'm going to get that bullet weight, that tungsten bullet weight, and I'm going to thread it on that wire so the point is facing down or toward that open end. Then it's easy. Then I just get my pliers and I tweak the end of it. I bend the end of it. I make just a little a little close on that wire. I kind of R it off on the end. And now we've got a half ounce weight on a rigid wire with a big four aught flipping hook above it. The great thing about that Tokyo rig is that weight is separate from the hook. So it helps punch or penetrate that really thick cover. And then once it gets through, the hook is free swinging. There's no weight there to bog it down. It's a little bit off the bottom, and it's, it's very fluid. It moves. Um, I liked a creature or beaver-style bait post-frontal when I'm fishing this thick cover. This is a Berkeley Powerbait Bunker Hog. I love a bunker hog. And it's just, um, just a real streamlined beaver-style or creature-style bait. And I'll just do my normal... Texas rig on that Tokyo and this thing is great gets into that thick cover I can shake it has a lot of movement and it really really can imitate the forage well bluegill crawfish bait whatever it is okay so for post frontal bass that stay shallow get into that thick cover use a Tokyo rig the second group of fish and these can be a little more challenging sometimes to catch. But a lot of times, this is where the majority of fish go after the front hits, is they slide out to deeper water. They slide on out to deeper water. So if before the front, they were in, you know, zero to 10 feet of water, they're gonna slide on out to 15, 20, sometimes even deeper sometimes suspend it over deeper water. Once again on our drawing, when that front passes and that barometer starts to rise up, a lot of these fish will push toward deeper water. 
those fish that were shallow make a movement heading out toward deeper water. And they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to find the deeper water cover that's out there. In a lot of lakes, it's a brush pile that's sitting out in deeper water, sitting out over that deeper water break line. It could be a brush pile. It could be a boulder. It could be a little patch of milfoil or hydrilla. Those fish are going to go to that next available deep cover, or a lot of times they'll move out and they'll suspend right next to that break line that goes into the deep water basin or the river channel. And those fish will literally suspend out there. And a lot of times those suspended fish will be around bait fish. They'll be pods of bait. Um, sometimes there's a little water temperature change, but for whatever reason, they're suspended. If this is 30 feet, they might suspend 10 to 15 feet down. You really need good electronics to find those suspended fish. But for either of these two examples, for a fish that go deep post frontal, I've got a bait for you that will catch them when it's post frontal. And it is a swim bait, a swim bait. And I want to specify here, I'm not talking about giant California trout swim baits, and I'm not talking about little tiny micro finesse swim baits. I'm talking about standard size swim baits from three and a half inches all the way maybe to five or six inches. Uh, specifically, soft boot tail style swim baits. This is so effective post frontal when fish sh shift to deeper water, whether they're around deeper cover or suspended. This has been a killer for me. Uh, I wanna show you how easy it is to rig this thing too. This is the Berkley Power Bait Power Swimmer. Comes in a lot of sizes. This is the 3.8. I'm in love with this size. It does a great job of mimicking a lot of different types of forage, okay? Uh, and if you look at that Berkley Power Bait Power Swimmer, it's, it's a classic, boot tail design. Um, most of the time when it's normal cover and for suspended fish, I'll fish it on a jig head. Uh, I use a VMC. This is an Ike approved uh, swim bait jig head. Love this jig head because it has um, a great keeper system on it to keep that plastic from sliding. It's got a really natural fish shaped head. But here's the most important thing. It's got a 90 degree line tie, which is what you want when you're fishing a swim bait. And the main thing when I thread this swim bait on, and again, this is the 3.8 Power Swimmer, is I want to make sure that that boot tail, that the bend in the boot tail, the angle of the tail, is bending the opposite way of the bend of the hook. So my hook's gone this way, I want my boot tail to go that way, okay? The other thing too, it's real easy. It's usually the darker side should be on top of the swim bait. Okay. And look at that thing. There you have it. Um, it's a little swim bait. It's a three, eight, uh, the jig head size. I really like anything from a quarter all the way up to three quarters of an ounce, but the three eights and the half ounce are magic sizes, especially that one right there, which is the three eights. The great thing about this swim bait for these post-spawn bass that have moved deeper is you can count it down. It sinks. So if that brush pile or that boulder or that little patch of milfoil or hydrilla, if that's in 10 foot of water and before the front they were up in five, I cast it out. I count to 10. Take my time and count to 10. Let it get to the bottom and I just start to slow reel it. Same thing with these suspended fish. If I go out and graph that deep water break out to that main basin, that main river ledge, and I see the fish 15 foot down over 30, it sinks. Long cast, past where I marked the fish, count to 15, click my reel handle over, and start a slow, steady retrieve. 
There's something about that steady motion of that tail, that boot tail on that power swimmer that makes those post-spawn fish bite. Um, I hope you learned something today. Uh, main thing to remember is it's not impossible to catch them during the post-frontal conditions. You can still catch them. Go thicker or go deeper. Try that Tokyo rig and that thick stuff. Try that swim bait out in that deep water. And I promise you, you're going to get a couple bites, even post front. Um, listen, if you like what you heard in today's In the Shop, take a second and subscribe to my channel. Look at that. The button's right there. If you're already subscribed, do me a favor. Tell your buddy to subscribe to Mike Iconelli Fishing. We're going to have some great videos coming your way. Uh, good luck, good fishing, and don't be afraid to catch them in post-frontal conditions.